What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please go down below the video and smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Now in this video, we are going to take a stock PlayStation Classic and we're gonna mod it so we can add whatever games we want to our device. But before we do that, I do wanna give a shout out to Skill Gaming for sponsoring this video but we'll talk about them later in the video, so let's jump back into the mod. Now, if you're a fan of the channel, you know that in the past, I've done dozens of modding videos on the PlayStation Classic using different mods and adding different ports and things like that. What we're gonna do here is a full tutorial because it's been a couple of years and a few steps have changed, so we're just gonna go and assume that you've never done a mod on your PlayStation Classic and get you fully up and running. Now, if you did previously have Project Eris running and you want to uninstall Project Eris to install this new mod from AutoBleam, I will leave a link on how to do that in the description down below. Now, there are two different mods that you can use. There is AutoBleam or Project Eris. And although there is some slight differences between the two, all in all, they are very similar. They just have different artwork and different styles and even a few different applications built right into them. Now in this video, we're gonna focus on AutoBleam simply because it is still currently being supported and they just released their 1.0 release. Unfortunately, Project Eris and the team behind them is currently on hiatus and we don't know if they're ever gonna pick the project back up. So we're gonna focus on AutoBleam for the time being. Now, before we get started, there are going to be a very few things that you are going to need. The first being obviously your PlayStation Classic. You cannot mod your PlayStation without owning the console. So that is number one. Number two is going to be a low powered USB drive, at least to start. We can move to a more advanced or higher powered USB drive or even a hard drive later on, but in order to get the mod on the PlayStation Classic, it needs to be a low powered USB drive. If you don't have one, an alternative solution is to purchase a powered USB hub and that will bypass any of the power requirements on the PlayStation Classic. Now, if you don't have any of these things, I will leave some links in the description down below of things that I've personally used and I know that they work. Now, installing the mod is actually really straightforward. What we need to do is jump onto the AutoBleam Discord channel and grab it right from their announcements tab. Now, if you don't have access to the AutoBleam Discord, I will leave an invitation link as well in the description for you guys to use. We're gonna hop over to the announcements section and you can see the latest post is going to show you that AutoBleam 1.0 has been released and you have five different sites in which you can grab it from. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and grab it from the Google Drive, but if you prefer to use the Mega Link or the OneDrive link as well, you can do that. Now within the folder, there's going to be several options. The one that we need is AutoBleam 1.0. You'll notice there is another file called AutoBleam 1.0 themes, and that's going to be a great option if you like to play around with themes, but we're not gonna mess with that today. We're just gonna grab the AutoBleam main hack. We're gonna right click on the file, we're gonna hit download, and we're gonna save it right to our desktop. Now I've already got it, so I'm not gonna go ahead and download it a second time, but essentially this is what you would do. Once the file is downloaded, you're gonna locate it. In my case, I downloaded it right to my desktop. Then we need to right click on the zip file and we need to extract to AutoBleam 1.0. What that'll do is it'll take all the contents within that zip file and dump them into a new folder in the same directory that your zip file is. So in my case, it's going to create a new folder called AutoBleam 1.0, and within that folder, it's gonna have all of the contents of that mod. This is everything that we need aside from our USB drive. You've got a payload folder, apps, AutoBleam, games, RetroArch, ROMs, and themes. And then aside from those folders, you have a number of text files that just provide additional information to do different features like Wi-Fi, setting up Bluetooth, or installing their custom kernel. The next thing that we need to do is grab a USB drive. I do recommend a drive that is a minimum of 32 gigs. In my case, I'm using a 64 gig SanDisk Cruiser. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up as well. Now, before we get started, there is a few things that we have to do to prep our USB drive. Currently, if we right click on our USB drive and go into properties, you're gonna see that it is currently formatted as XFAT. So that's actually not gonna work. In order to do the initial mod, your USB drive must be FAT32. And if you try to format it right within the uh, Windows formatting tool, you're gonna see that I actually don't have that option because my drive is larger than 32 gigs. So I do need to use a third party formatting software. 
In order to do that, I've gone ahead and downloaded GUI format. And if I double click on that, it's gonna pop up and we are now able to format this drive in FAT32 format. Now, before we can do that, we have to close all the file explorer windows because the application can't run when they are open. So we're gonna go ahead and X out of all of those. Then we are going to make sure that we have the correct drive selected. In my case, I know it is my iDrive. You can see 61 gigs, XFAT, SanDisk 64. Next, we have to change the volume label. Now this is important if you are using this software to format, or if you're using the built-in Windows formatter, the USB drive must be named Sony, S-O-N-Y, all capitals. Otherwise, the PlayStation Classic will not be able to register or recognize the drive itself. We're gonna go ahead and hit start. It just takes a few seconds to do the formatting and then we're ready to go. As you can see, I'm now finished. I can hit close and I can reopen all of my folders. Now we've got our USB drive, which is formatted as FAT32 and labeled Sony, all capitals. We've got all of our downloaded files from the AutoBleam website. All we need to do now is grab these, drag and drop them into our new USB drive, and we just gotta let that finish. So we are going to just skip over this process right now. Okay, so all of our files have moved over onto our USB drive, and we're actually ready to take our USB drive and plug it into our PlayStation Classic. But before we do that, I do wanna let you guys know a little bit about today's sponsor, Skill Gaming. Skill Gaming is an online community that allows you to play online games and make money by either challenging your own high scores or dueling against other online players. The better you get, the more money you can make. Not interested in playing online for money? Well, that's not really an issue either because you can play any of these games for free and earn XP and climb the leaderboards for the ultimate bragging rights. Skillgaming.com offers exactly what the name implies, skill-based online indie and mobile style games. There are even some games that are reminiscent of some of your favorite 80s arcade games just with a modern 21st century twist. You're able to play both on mobile or on PC, and you're even able to compete against any of the players across both platforms. There are currently more than 130 games available to play and over 100 more in the development pipeline with Skill Gaming releasing a new game on average every two weeks. You can challenge other players to duels or you can purchase ammo, recruit warriors and battle it out in an intense war. And one of my favorite games is 2021 A Space Disaster. It's a ton of fun. Now, there have been more than 6.8 million plays so far since their initial launch, and Skill Gaming has a big and growing community with over 37,000 channel members on Discord alone. To date, there has been $200,000 in prize money paid out to the current user base, and adding and withdrawing your payments are really easy, and they have very small minimum deposits with very low fees. Not only can you use traditional currencies, but you can also participate using your crypto wallets and cryptocurrencies as well. There are many ways to play or challenge other players online with skill gaming, so do not wait. If you are interested in trying it out for free or learning more, click the link in the description. All right, so now what we can do is grab that USB drive out of our PC and we're gonna plug it into the second controller port on the PlayStation Classic. You're gonna make sure that the power cord is not connected and it's just the USB drive and your controller. Once that's in place, you can go ahead and grab your power cord and you can plug it into the PlayStation Classic. After a few seconds, you're gonna notice that the power indicator on the PlayStation Classic turns a solid amber and if you're using a USB drive that has a light, you might notice it is flashing or it is showing some signs of light. We're gonna go ahead and hit the power button. And once we do that, the mod is going to start. You're also gonna notice that the PlayStation Classic LED indicator is going to quickly flash between amber and green. So the PlayStation Classic has booted up. It's very quick. It jumps right into this main menu for AutoBleam. What this is going to indicate is that everything has worked correctly and you are currently actually booting off of that USB drive. If you did not get this far, there's a good chance that your USB drive is not compatible and you'll either need to find a different one or you'll need to use a powered USB hub to get to this state. Now the next step in the mod is to install the custom kernel. 
The custom kernel is going to allow you to connect in an OTG adapter in the back of the PlayStation Classic, which will override any of the power limitations of the second USB drive. And then obviously by freeing up that second USB drive, you can continue to play multiplayer games. So what we need to do is go ahead and hit the start button, which is labeled as auto bleam. Next, we're gonna be right within the main carousel. And I don't have any other games other than the stock games on the PlayStation Classic, which are all visible here. But what we do next is press the select button. Then we press the select button one more time and that's gonna take us into the apps section. From here, we need to locate the Auto Bleem Flash Kernel Installer. We're gonna go ahead and hit our X button. Then it's gonna provide us a set of instructions on how to do this. Now, I'm gonna go through everything with you guys, but essentially, it's very straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and hit OK. Then it's going to load the ABS Flash. And as you can see, there is a number of options along the bottom. X to flash the kernel, square to do a full backup or triangle to do restore mode. And then of course you can quit with circle. Before we flash the custom kernel, we want to do a full backup. And the reason for that is if anything goes wrong or there's any problems or we wanna restore our console back to stock in the future, you cannot do it without a backup. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the square button for full backup and it's going to start that process. Now what you're gonna notice on the PlayStation Classic while it's doing this process is that the power indicator is simply just gonna be flashing on and off green. That's totally normal. We're just gonna allow it to finish. So now the PlayStation Classic has booted us right back to our apps menu. That means we've got a full backup of the PlayStation Classic original kernel. Next, we're gonna go ahead and hit the X button to play. And just to verify that, you can actually turn off the console right now, plug in the USB drive into your computer, and then you're gonna see a file called LBoot on the USB drive. If that LBoot file is there, that means the backup is successful. And I would actually recommend taking that file and saving it somewhere on your computer or on an external hard drive just for additional security measures. But back on the PlayStation Classic, we're gonna enter into the kernel installer one more time with the X key. We're gonna hit X again to pass the installer instructions. And then the final step here is to press the X button to flash the kernel. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna confirm that we wanna do this and we're gonna hit yes with the X button as well. So now that it is fully installed the custom kernel, it did go to a black screen and you did have to grab the power cord out and then plug it back in. But that is actually pretty much all that we had to do. Now we've got a custom kernel installed PlayStation Classic that we can now power with OTG. Now I'm gonna go ahead and power down my console and we're gonna switch over to the PC so I can show you guys just how easy it is to add games to your PlayStation Classic. Okay, so here we are on our PC and I've got my USB drive plugged in. As you can see, I do now have this lboot.epb file, which is our backup of the original kernel. This thing's really important. I can't stress enough how important it's going to be to have a backup of it somewhere not just on your USB drive, but somewhere on your PC, just in case something goes weird. Now, adding games to this system is really, really simple. As you can see on the root of the USB drive, we have two folders, one called games and one called ROMs. The games folder is where you're going to wanna to put any PlayStation 1 title. This is going to be for the main carousel display and all of the games for PlayStation are gonna be located here. The folder for ROMs, if we open it up, is actually a RetroArch folder. This is where you would put ROMs for Super Nintendo, Nintendo, or any of the other listed consoles right within the allocated folders. Then we can actually load any of those games with the correct core through RetroArch and even Emulation Station, which is built right into the mod. So we're gonna go back to the main drive. And for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna add one additional game to my existing build, which is Air Combat. We're gonna go ahead and throw that in the games folder it's gonna take a couple of seconds to transfer that file in. Once that's done, we are good to go. Now I should mention, in the games folder, you can do a couple of different format. In my case, I like to use PBP files just because they are more condensed and smaller, but that only really works for single disc games. If you are going to want to play or load multi-disc games, you're gonna need the bin Q files, which works just the same. You grab your bin files and your Q file, 
and dump it into that folder just the same. And to add those types of games in, it's really simple as well. You just need to grab the bin and queue files, drag and drop them into the games folder as well. Just make sure that the queue file is properly formatted for both discs. Once you've got those games in there, you are good to go. We can go ahead and close our USB drive. We can plug it into our PlayStation Classic with either OTG or back into the front port, which I don't really recommend and then we're gonna turn on the console. Now we've got our console booting up and in just a second, I'll be able to show you that it is going to begin scanning all of the new games that we placed on the USB drive. You're gonna see right at the beginning, it says, hey, the games list has changed, press X to scan. We're gonna go ahead and hit X. It's gonna go through all of the games. Now in my build, I have a ton of games added already, but it's going to rescan everything and it's gonna add them into the correct areas. Now that it's done, we're going to be back to our main menu and we can press start to launch AutoBleam. And here we go. So as you can see, I've got all of the added games. There's the new one that I added, Air Combat. And then we've got all the additional titles as well. What's nice is all I had to do was drag and drop the game in and it auto scraped the artwork and got all of the metadata and everything that we needed right away for us. So we didn't have to do any other work. It's a drag and drop system. Most of the games that you try to load will work, but there are a few exceptions to certain games that are not gonna run with the built-in emulator. So the team at AutoBleam has a backup solution and that would be to run those games through RetroArch. Now, in order to do that, it's actually really simple. We can go ahead and back out into the main menu and we can press the square button to launch RetroArch. And then right from within RetroArch, we've now got the ability to launch a bunch of titles. So if you scroll down, you can actually create the content or scan your directories and all of your file folders are going to be found and all your games are gonna be visible. As you can see, I've got Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, I've got the Sega Genesis, NES, and then here's our PlayStation titles. But we can also scan any of the ones that we added to that folder on the USB drive as well. And then we can assign a different PlayStation core to get some of the non-functioning games to work correctly. Additionally, within RetroArch, you've got the ability to look at all of the applications and we've got access to Emulation Station. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys Emulation Station just because I think this is a great option for your PlayStation Classic. And here we are right into Emulation Station. We've got access to all of our different games. If you hit into one of the consoles, you've got access to all the games. Now I haven't scraped for any artwork, but this is going to function just like Emulation Station would on a Raspberry Pi. You can scrape for artwork, you can get everything set up, you just need an active Wi-Fi connection. But that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of here. We're gonna exit Emulation Station. We're gonna jump back into AutoBleam. I'm gonna launch a title just to show you guys that it is working, but that is pretty much it. That is how you can mod your PlayStation Classic with AutoBleam from scratch. Again, if you previously had Project Iris on your device and you want to uninstall the custom kernel, I will leave links in the description down below. But as always, anything that you could need will be down below the video. But that is pretty much all I've got for you guys in this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.